All right, welcome back everyone to Ultra Config Tutorials. As I'm sure you've noticed, we are living in a time of explosive growth for the network automation industry. A core component of modern automation technology is the language Yang, yet another next generation. In today's tutorial, let's do a deep dive and learn the language from scratch. So, what is Yang? In short, Yang is a language used to describe data models of network devices. The language is maintained by NetMod, an IETF working group. That's the Internet Engineering Task Force. The latest version of Yang is 1.1 and the full specification of the language is documented in RFC number 7950. With that said, what is a data model of a network device? To answer that, let's imagine a hypothetical scenario where your friend asks you what IP interface attributes can be configured on a specific router. You might say, well, to configure an interface on this router, you need to supply an interface name, an IP address, and a subnet mask. You also need to enable the interface. The router will keep the interface disabled if you don't. Now, as simple as this response sounds, what we just did there was describe a data model for an IP interface. A Yang model will do the exact same thing, but use strict syntax rules to make the model standardized and easy to process with computers. Note that in our response to our friend, we didn't provide any specific values for an interface. We only described the data structure. This is an important distinction to note as it will make the bigger picture much easier to understand when we later talk about NetConf. But first, let's redo our IP interface example, but this time we will describe the model using Yang rather than plain English. I'll be working on Ubuntu 18.04 for this demo, as well as Windows for the text editor. Before we write our Yang model, let's install an excellent Python utility called PyYang, which will allow us to interact with our model. We'll also need two dependencies for the utility to work. Let's install them now. I'll now install PyYang by cloning the repo from GitHub and running the install script. With that done, let's create a new file for defining our Yang model. The file extension must be Yang. I'll name my file ultraconfiginterfaces.yang. We'll now open the file in a text editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but any text editor will work. At the top of the file, we'll add a module statement, followed by the name of our module and a braces block. The module name must match the name of our file. All of the content we now add to the file will go inside the module braces. Next. Let's add header information, meta information, and revision history to our module. You'll notice that in Yang syntax, strings are terminated by semicolons rather than newline characters. This allows long strings to be spread over multiple lines, preserving readability. The labels, Yang version, namespace, organization, etc are known as statements in Yang terminology. Let's go over the function of each statement we just added. Yang version. This identifies the Yang language specification that the module will conform to. We will ensure our module conforms to Yang 1.1, which is defined in RFC 7950. Namespace. This is an XML namespace which must be unique for the module. We used a URL, but you can use a URN, a URI, or any other unique identifier here. 
the namespace specified here must match the namespace of any XML objects which conform to our Yang model. We'll show you one of these XML instances later in the video. Prefix. This is a short and unique string to identify our module. This prefix may be used in other Yang modules to import definitions contained in this one. Organization. Simply a string identifying the entity responsible for the module. We also have contact details for the entity responsible for the module and a description of the module. And finally, a revision statement used for version control. Each edit to a Yang module will add a new revision statement detailing the changes in sub-statements. With the header and meta information out of the way, we can now move on to our actual module definition. The Yang language includes a set of built-in data types. The language also allows, however, the ability for developers to define their own data types. We'll do that now for our IPv4 address and subnet mask. Both of these attributes should conform to the dotted quad data type that we will now define. We'll add this definition to our Yang module. You may be thinking, why not just use a string instead of defining a custom data type? While this would work, it would certainly be a bad practice. In all programming, it is always best to add constraints on the lowest layers to avoid a later reliance on higher layers for error checking. Our dotted quad definition is quite simple once you get the idea. Our definition says, define a new type called dotted quad. A value will conform to this data type if it is a string and matches the regular expression defined in the pattern statement. Moving on, let's now add a container for our interfaces. Our interfaces container will hold the child nodes for our configuration data and state data. Let's now distinguish between the meaning of these two data types. Understanding the difference is very important for Yang and NetConf development. Configuration data. These are read-write configuration fields. For our interface example, this would be the interface name, IP address, subnet mask, and whether the interface is enabled or disabled from an admin point of view. We also have state data. These are read-only operational data fields. For our interface example, this could include a packet counter and operational state, whether the port is physically up or down. Basically, everything you can see on a router when you run show commands. Again, remember that Yang modules will only define the structure of configuration and state data, it will not contain an instantiated value of the data. Alright, we'll now add a list to our container for defining our interface configuration data. Our interface configuration data is quite readable. We have four leaf nodes which define the attributes of an interface. These are labeled with the identifiers, name, address, subnet mask, and enabled. Three of the leaf nodes are marked as mandatory. The enabled node is optional and will have a default value of false if not specified. You'll also notice that the data type of the address and subnet mask is dotted quad. This matches the identifier from our earlier definition. Let's now add our state data to the interfaces container. Looking at the state data, you'll notice that one key difference is the config statement, which is set to false. This indicates that the child nodes belonging to this list are read only. You'll also notice the enumeration data type 
which we haven't used before. This is another built-in data type which allows us to restrict the valid values for this OPA status node to a finite set. In our case, the operational status will only ever be up or down. That concludes the construction of our Yang module for an interface. We may now proceed to interact with the module using PyYang. Let's copy our Yang module over to our Ubuntu machine. The first cool trick to learn with PyYang is basic validation. If we run the utility without any options, the command will ensure our Yang module is syntactically correct. If all is well, the output should come out clean as it did just now. If there are any syntax errors in the module, the command will print a message explaining the issue. To demonstrate this, let's introduce a typographical error by replacing the type enumeration with the word spelled incorrectly, enumeration. Running the validation command again will highlight the error. All right, now that we have confirmed that, let's fix our spelling mistake. The next great trick to learn is how to view the schema tree of a Yang module. The schema tree is a summarized visual form of a Yang data model. You can view the tree by adding the format specifier option within your command. That's dash F followed by the word tree. Let's run that now. And there we go. The RW acronym is short for read write. The RO acronym is short for read only. The question mark next to the enabled node indicates that this object is optional. The rest of the tree is quite self-explanatory. Let's now move on to another awesome utility called Yang2DSDL. This binary is bundled into the PyYang project and should have been added to your system path upon installation. The utility is short for Yang to document schema definition languages. The primary purpose of this tool is to convert Yang modules to DSDL schemas, but we can also use the tool to validate instances of data to ensure they conform to a Yang module. This will be easier to understand with an example. Here we have an XML instance of the Yang module which we defined today. You can see the attributes we described in our Yang module. If you're familiar with netconf, this XML data object will look familiar to you. This is what a payload looks like in a netconf request to edit the configuration of a network device. We'll now use Yang to DSDL to ensure the XML object is valid. Let's save the XML object to a file. We'll call our file data.xml. We can now run the command to generate the DSDL schemas of our Yang module and validate our data instance. All looks well. Let's put an invalid IP address into our XML file and rerun the validation. As expected, we see that the validation has failed. There we go. That's everything essential you need to learn about Yang. With a solid grasp of the concepts of the Yang language, you'll find that network automation solutions built on top of the NetConf protocol become demystified. NetConf is the protocol for sending and receiving configuration data and state data of network devices. And Yang is the language which describes the structure of this data. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it. You can download the full Yang module we developed today on the UltraConfig website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. I'll also leave you with a few other resources. The IETF maintain a large number of foundational Yang modules. Check them out on NetConf Central. Another great resource is the OpenConfig GitHub. 
The OpenConfig working group maintain a large number of Yang modules on GitHub. The intention of this project is to create common Yang models that all network vendors can conform to. This enables end users to use the same netconf payloads across different devices. And of course, I'll leave a link to PyYang, which is one of the best tools for Yang developers out there. Before I end today's tutorial, I'll also shout out UltraConfig. Netconf is great at pushing configuration to network devices, but how do you actually automate the generation of network config? UltraConfig is a powerful piece of software for automating the generation of network config. If you work in the network engineering industry, I highly recommend you to check it out. The software includes an API to fully enable end-to-end -end network automation. A link to the software will be in the description. I'll also put a link in the description to a written form of today's tutorial for you to try it yourself. So that's it for today already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in my next video.